Okay, good morning class. Um, so the first thing we're going to look at today is the answers to our motor exercises from yesterday. So we had three different options here, three different um, problems here to go over. So the first one was turn the right motor on forward at half speed for five seconds and then stop. So your first code should look a little bit like this. Um, you're going to start your right motor. Half speed is about 63, anywhere in between you know, 60 or 70 would probably be all right with that. Um, just take 127 and divide it in half. That's pretty much all you got to do. Um, so then we wait for five seconds and then stop your motor. As long as you don't have any red X's over here, you should be okay and it should go ahead and work on your program when you click download robot. And uh, make sure also that your code under Vex Cortex communication mode um, should be on USB only. Now you, mine was on competition because I was at a competition last time we used this computer. But you should be at USB only. That way you don't have to wait um, 10 seconds for it to connect to a controller. So that's the answer for, to number one. Um, this next problem was to start your left motor this time at 3 fourths speed. And I, all I did was take 127. I multiplied it by 0.75, which is 3 fourths. And uh, that gave me about 95.25. So I just rounded that down to 95. Um, wait for two and a half seconds and then stop the left motor. So that's how you do number two. So you can go ahead and check your code. And um, for the motor number three, uh, third out option, was to start both motors at the same time. Now, even though these are not two separate lines, uh, the computer is working pretty much at the speed of light. It's working really quickly. Um, so start motor right motor and start motor left motor will actually happen at approximately the same time. So even though they, they start almost a little bit after each other, they're basically going to look like they're starting at the same time. So um, that's how you would want to set that one up. And then you wait for 7.25 seconds, and then you stop both motors. All right, so today we're going to continue on uh, with the next lesson here. And we're going to look at until commands. So motor speed is affected by battery power. The more charged your battery is, your motors will move more quickly. Um, so if your battery is running low, your battery, your motors may start running um, slower, right? And then that means the robot will not move as consistently as the battery power drains. Uh, if you've experienced this effect, it's probably just because uh, your batteries either might not be as charged as other people's, things like that. So wouldn't it be better if we could control how much the robot moves, regardless of how long the function takes to complete? Let's say, for example, you want it to move 10 feet, right? And you could um, maybe have the robot run into something like a wall or a box, and it should bump into a sensor. And that would stop the motors. That would be the best way to do it. So we can use this with, with touch sensors. We've got two types of touch sensors. We have a limit and a bump switch. We'll talk about both of those today. So touch sensors, again, limits are the top, uh, the one with the uh, metal spring on it, and the bump switches. These are both considered touch sensors. Uh, right now, they should be plugged into digital one and digital two ports. Now the touch sensors, they have two different states. They're either pressed or they're released. If they're being pressed, you might notice in your debug menu, um, in your debug window, if you press the limit switch, it should be a one. If you release the limit switch, it should be a zero. And uh, like we said, we got two types. We got the limit switches and the bumper switches. And we can use these sensors using either the sensor value command You'll notice that S at the beginning is capitalized, so it's capital S and capital V for sensor value, and we're using square brackets with that command. We can also use the until touch, until release, and until bump commands. Also, that limit switch arm can be bent to create more of a, a more ideal hit area. Uh, I don't suggest bending them all the way. If you bend metal too much, it will break, so um, I would suggest just not bending it at all. Um, but you can bend it if, if we need it, need it to be bent. Um, both sensors spring back to the open position. So um, both sensor, both the limit and the bump switch has a spring in it that goes back to the open position. You also want to watch out for bouncing. As the sensor is pressed or released, it may bounce between 1 and 0 very briefly and quickly. You might not even be able to catch it, but um, just the way that electricity works, um, there are little sparks that kind of jump around. So it might go from one to zero very, very quickly and very briefly. So you can fix this by having a very brief wait time inserted after, this, after the touch sensor 
commands to reduce the bouncing effect. So this would look like this. You'd have an untilt bump, for like your bump switch or your bump or whatever you want to call it, and just have a, a small wait period of like 0 0.05 seconds would be fine. All right, so let's try this bump switch exercise. We're going to program the right motor to turn on at half power until the bump switch is pressed and then the motor should stop. All right, so we're going to program the right motor to turn on half half speed until the bump switch is pressed and the motor should stop. So let's go ahead and program this. So you can even use the old program. I would suggest going to File, Save As, and saving this maybe as Bump Switch. And saving it as uh, that file name, just call it Bump Switch. You can do, you don't have to do it um, like we're naming variables, but whatever you want to name it, Bump Switch is fine. And then go ahead and save it. So go to File, Save As, Bump Switch. Now we can go ahead and take some of the stuff out. So we want to start motor, start right motor. At half speed would be 63. Now this next part, we're going to wait until we press the bump switch. All right, I came here for this, until touch, until the bump switch is pressed. All right, so if we go to our natural language and our until section, We've got until bump is one that we could use. Uh, we could use until release, and we could use until touch. So until touch works as soon as you touch the button. As soon as it goes from a zero to a one, as soon as it senses that it is it is connected, it's going to go ahead and run that next code. The until release, you have to press the button, and then when you release that button, it's going to work. So um, this is like pressing the button in. And then when you release the button, that's when that section will work as well. And finally, we have an until bump. This means the touch sensor has to be pressed in and then released out. So it's going to be pressed and then released. Um, I typically just use touch. That's usually the most, uh, the most responsive one. So we can use until touch. If you want to use until release or until bump, those are okay. But I typically go with until touch. So until touch. And then we also, yeah, and you can actually just drag and drop this if you'd like to. That way it'll tell you exactly what you need. So if, if we drag and drop until touch in here, it's looking for our sensor port. And we can go ahead and put in bump switch. And so what's this, what this is going to do is this part of the program. Let's go ahead and tab this over. This part of the program will start the motor. And this line of code is going to wait until the bump switch is pressed. All right, so what do we want after the bump switch is pressed? We want to stop the motor. So stop motor, right motor, semicolon. And this code will stop the motor. Then we can take out some of this white space here. Um, also, if you don't have the indents here, um, one way that you can fix all this is by clicking this Fix Formatting button. And that will fix all your formatting. So let's just say I didn't have any of these formats here. Uh, we like to use tabs and white space just to organize our code. So we can click on Fix Formatting, and that will fix it all up for us. All right, so go ahead and download that through robot and see if that works. All right, let's do the limit switch exercises as well. So we're going to wait for the limit switch to be touched before the right motor turns on at half speed for five seconds, and then stops. All right, so this time we're going to wait until we press the limit switch. The right motor is going to turn on at half speed, and then five seconds later, it'll stop. So I'm going to go ahead and go to File, Save As, this will be a limit switch two, or bump. This is actually a bump switch, yeah. This is the bump switch exercise, uh, the limit switch exercise. So we're going to rename this to limit switch. I want to say limit switch one because we've got two different exercises here. So limit switch one, we'll save that. Now we can just take this until touch, and I'm going to scoop it and put it up here. Eh, that might be too complicated. Let's just go ahead and take out this whole line. So you can highlight this whole line and go ahead and delete it. We do want to have a wait in there. So we're going to wait for five seconds. 
and we can fix our formatting. Tab this out. This will be our weight. Wait five seconds. And then above the start motor right here, we'll go ahead and enter. Fix our formatting again. <clears throat> and right above that, we are going to have an until touch of our limit switch. So here we're going to wait. Wait until limit switch is pressed. Then our right motor is going to start half speed. It's going to wait for five seconds and it's going to stop the right motor. And that will get us done. Wait for the limit switch to be touched. Turn on half, right, right motor for half speed. Five seconds and stop. There we go. So that's it for limit switch number one. Let's go ahead and do limit switch number two. So I'm going to go ahead and go to file, save as, limit switch number two. Remember, we're saving all these files in your AR folder or your Robot C folder. So I'm, I'm saving this in another folder called AR Testbed. You can do that if you would like to. You can just save it in your Robot C folder as well. Uh, would be fine. All right, so the second exercise, wait for the limit switch to be touched before both motors turn on at half power until the sensor is bumped again. Both motors should then move in reverse at half power for 3.5 seconds. Now we're getting a little bit more complicated here. So we're going to wait for the limit switch to be touched, which we've already got that. We've got until the limit switch. So we're already waiting. Then we're going to turn on both motors at half power. Let's go ahead and do that. Turn on both motors at half power. So start motor. This time we're going to put left motor at 63 semicolon. So we are going to start the left motor, start the right motor. And again, putting commas here is just a, a easy way to keep track of what your code is doing. Start right motor until the sensor is bumped again. All right, so we're going to take out this weight here, and we're going to replace that with an until, until touch limit switch and we're going to go ahead and replace this comment wait till limit switch is pressed all right this part we're going to go ahead and take out the stop motor function we're going to start both motors actually all i'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and copy these two lines. Press Control C to copy and Control V to paste. Fix by formatting up here. And it says they need to mo move in reverse at half power for 3.5 seconds. So we're going to go negative 63 for both of these. And we're going to wait 3.5 seconds. Wait 3.5 seconds. All right. So that should be our code for limit switch two. We can go ahead and save that. And then we're good. All right. So try this code out today. See how far you can get into it. Um, and that is your assignment for today. So good luck today. And uh, if you get stuck at any time, go ahead and just rewatch the video. Go back through it and um, try to troubleshoot. Also try to ask your neighbors as well. So have a good day, class. And uh, hopefully I'll see you tomorrow.